Welcome, everyone, to an NCAA Digital March Madness Men's Basketball Offseason Chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by, now I can say, new Duke head coach, John Shire. Uh, John, it has been quite an eventful first month on the job, uh, and it's still evolving as you're building the roster, building the staff. Uh, let's first deal with the staff. Um, you know, it was the Brotherhood, and then you went outside and picked up Jay Lucas, which is a phenomenal pickup. Uh, what was the thought process in going outside the Brotherhood to add to this staff? Yeah, well, the look, the Brotherhood is still strong and, and alive and well. You know, for us, we had an opportunity to really take a fresh look, fresh perspective. And, you know, talking to Jay, one, you think about the, the, the places he's been, you know, Florida, Texas, Kentucky, the great coaches he's been around and Coach Cal and Coach Barnes and, uh, you know, and Coach Smart. Uh, I mean, to get that perspective and that experience at his age, it really doesn't happen. And, uh, you know, I really felt like he just fit with our staff, you know, just he's got a great way about him. Like I said, he knows the game. Uh, he's great with people. He's great with players. Uh, so really excited for him to join our staff. He's been a great compliment and he's going to be a rising star in this profession. You know, as soon as um, that national semifinal game ended and, and you dealt with sort of getting back to campus and things sort of settling down, I, I'm just curious, how soon after that did that sort of mantle officially pass where everything now was on you to make the decisions and, and, and full steam ahead go forward? I don't know if the mantle has ever officially passed, but it, it kind of happened organically. And Andy, to be honest with you, I think there's, I mean, I'd be lying if I said there was some part of you after the game that night. Uh, I was actually coach and I had a conversation that night, but there's, you need to move on very quickly. When you go that far in the year, it's not like you have time to waste. You know, we had, most of our team had decisions to make with going pro and uh, you know, you have to talk to all our players. Of course, like you mentioned, there's staff changes. There's, uh, the fact you have a guy who's coached for 42 years to figure out, all right, what do we do next? Uh, there's a lot of decisions and things have to happen pretty quickly. So right away we got down to it and, uh, you know, made some important decisions and supported our guys and in, in their process of figuring out, figuring out what was next for them. So before we go to the roster real quick, uh, I've had the honor and privilege uh, to be around a lot of great Duke moments. And I think about, you know, 2010, uh, in Indy in 2015, obviously, and then witnessing the first ever Duke Carolina game. Uh, and I was there with Coach K in that locker room. Uh, I know I saw you back in there, you know, after that. Just what was that emotion like getting to the Final Four, playing Carolina, and then just in an epic game, obviously, unfortunately for you guys, just the way it ended, just, you know, having everything just build to that crescendo. It's hard to explain the environment, for, you know, for that game. It's one of those moments you kind of you had to be there to, to really understand what it was like. Uh, and look, the, the loss was disappointing. It was, it was heartbreaking. You're, you're a minute away. It's back and forth. Anything can happen. And uh, so but you want to be in those moments. Right. And, you know, I've been. You know, you mentioned 2010, my senior year as a player, we win the national championship. The year before, we're playing Villanova in Sweet 16, and I was crushed. I mean, it was heartbreaking. We They blew us out. and uh, But sometimes you, you, you want to be in the arena, failure is a part of it. And so for us, uh, it doesn't diminish the year that we had, ACC champs. You know, we were playing the ACC championship game, going to a Final Four. Do we come up short of our goal? Of course, we want to win the whole thing. Uh, but what a special year. Uh, I've been now a part of three Final Fours, uh, been to two before then as, as a fan, and there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. So anytime you go to a Final Four, to cherish it, to be in the moment. And, of course, I'm not saying winning's not what you want to do. You do want to win. Uh, there's a great opportunity uh, for both teams. Um, the work that you did with this recruiting class and building this roster – it wasn't all right after New Orleans. Obviously, a lot of that happened before then. How did that work where um, you were not technically the head coach, but you were going to be the head coach in securing a fantastic class like that? Right. Well, uh, I knew we didn't have time to waste. You know, I found out June 1, getting the job. And, uh, you know, really, that's 
we didn't recruit that class much because of coach didn't know what he was going to do in the future. So for us, we didn't waste much time with identifying the right guys that we felt belonged to Duke. And we didn't mess around. Like we didn't just offer a bunch of guys to, to just get players. We want to get the right fit for us. And I can say with each and every one of them, Andy, they, they, we knew, and uh, like, it's easy to say, all right, I want that guy. I want, I want Derek Lively. He looks pretty good to me. You know, he fits what Duke is about. Dreek Whitehead and uh, Mark Mitchell, Kyle Filipowski down the line, Jaden Shute, uh, Christian Reeves. You know, we, we watched and studied him for some time. So they all complement one another really well. Uh, they all are really winners at the high school level and they know how to compete. So for, for us, we get really excited thinking about just getting them here and getting to work, uh, but incredibly proud you know, the fact that end of the day, I wasn't able to show them here's exactly what it looks like with myself as a head coach, but they, they've believed and, and trusted the vision that we put forward. And I'm thankful for them. And, uh, you know, they also know I believe in them as well. So I'm excited to get going with, with all of them. And you, you worked the portal, you worked it well. What were you looking for in the transfer portal? Well, uh, first and foremost, we need experience inside. And, you know, Ryan Young is just a terrific addition for our team. You know, I've watched him for a long time, you know, really close with Chris Collins and watch what he's done over the course of his four year career, three years playing. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times in the transfer portal, you're getting to know someone, you know, on a very in a very short, short period of time with Ryan. I've watched him for a long time. I knew right away he's, he would be great here and uh, talk with Chris had conversations with Ryan, got him on campus, and uh, he's going to be a great addition to our program and adding that that veteran toughness, experience, and he's got a great skill set on offense as well uh, for us. And then Kale Catchings. And Kale, uh, same thing, you know, talked to Tommy Amaker, been in his program for four years, and Kale is going to just bring really uh, – he's a culture guy for us, you know, competes. Uh, it's going to be a, make a big impact on and off the floor. So – Adding, adding some maturity to our team will be uh, really important. Yeah, and it helps. Northwestern, Harvard, uh, they should fit in well at Duke. <laughs> yeah, they should. They should. If they don't, that's uh, there's a problem with that, but they definitely will. All right, last thing, John. Um, you know, when a legend, an iconic figure leaves, um, you know, sometimes they're around, sometimes they're not. I remember the late, great Big John Thompson would be around the program, certainly when, when his son was coaching. Um, Jay Wright has said he sort of wants to be around, but not too much, you know, with Kyle Neptune. Um, what do you think, how do you think it'll play with Coach K uh, being around, sort of being around, not being around uh, with you here in this first year? You know, it's been uh, really natural already. And I already know I'm going to have to uh, search Coach. You know, I'm going to have to go uh, find him to bring him back in the fold. You know, Coach has got a lot of things going on in his life and of course he wants to see our program succeed at the highest level possible but i'm, I'm not i know he's not going to be just hovering around or that's not he's going to live his life and so for me like i want to use him as a resource and somebody that's a close friend and uh, going to be part of each other's lives for a long time to come uh but it's it's been really organic and natural and it's going to continue that way. I don't know where he's going to watch the games from. That That's going to be interesting. And, uh, you know, I feel like he'll be a little – he'll be more nervous watching our games next year than he was for his for his own games, I have a feeling. <laughs> you can't really hide in Cameron. That's the problem. There's not it like this tough. glass suite that overlooks or anything. No, it's tough. So when, uh, when he comes to a game, and, and at some point he will, uh, it's not like he can hide or just blend in. So that will be, uh, be fun to see what that's like. And this spring and summer, he's got to train a puppy. So he's, be <laughs> he <does>. like that. <laughs> he's, he's busy with that. I can promise you that right now. He's, he's definitely busy with the puppy. Well, John, congratulations again. Uh, look forward to many of these kinds of conversations. Uh, appreciate your time. Andy, thanks so much.